roll. Uh, let's try yet another one. Like I said, it was a good conversation. So this has to do with um, fitness landscapes and choices around different strategies in response to those fitness landscapes. Uh, so remember the concept of fitness landscapes, and we had this notion of, of hills, we had this notion of, so uh, let me just recapitulate. Imagine XY plane, and I've got a Z dimension, so I'm like creating hills on a map. And uh, the hill represents the degree to which the strategy that that point in the uh, location is fit, it survives, it's a good reproductive strategy. So a saber-toothed tiger in Paleomythic North America is sitting on top of a very high hill. It's a peak predator, it's an adaptive strategy. Okay. Now, when you're in a particular uh, circumstance, you're always going to be making choices about how you actually move around that fitness landscape. Um, if you find yourself at the base of the hill and you begin the process of climbing that hill, that's called a hill climbing strategy. Uh, this is a baseline called like the fundamental strategy. It's sort of generally the right thing to do. Um, now, here's the interesting point, right? Here's the extension that I want to make. Uh, so think about a saber toothed tiger. It's at the peak. Now, when you're at the peak, you're in an interesting situation because what ends up happening is, uh, if I refer back to the video that I haven't uploaded yet, but hopefully by the time you watch this, will have already been uploaded about the distinction between the phenomenal and the noumenal. What will end up happening is, uh, as you begin the process of going about climbing a hill, what you end up doing is finding that the responsiveness of your phenomenal schema to the noumenal reality that you find yourself in is actually very effective. That's the whole point. That's the definition of climbing a hill. Your, your adaptive strategies are, in fact, adaptive. And the process of climbing a hill is a process of refinement. It's a process of making your phenomenal strategies more quick, more efficient, more effective. Right? You're actually needing to clean out stuff that is extraneous. Right? You're really tightening in. And kind of in, in exactly the same way that if you have a, a, a telescope exquisitely focused on a distant star, you can actually get real clarity on that tiny, tiny point of light, but you can't see anything else. This happens. Right? This is actually just a fundamental trade-off. So what I want to introduce, introduce now is maybe a new concept. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, the generator function of adaptive capacity uh, or the more generalized ca adaptive capacity rather than the specialized adaptive capacity. So what ends up happening is you have a generator function, which is just sort of raw exploration of possibility space. And then you have uh, the things that it generates, which are your phenomenal sense-making and choice-making schema, or you can actually put it like this if you want the generator function, these things kind of come out of it. And if you're the saber-toothed tiger, what ends up happening is that this actually becomes a waste. You don't need to have the ability to edit and update. You're carrying stuff that you don't need to have. And what you do is you just keep pushing more and more and more into the surface layer. You become all surface. You become perfectly efficient, perfectly mapped, exquisitely detailed, filigreed, no uh, fat on this surface so that you're the most effective saber-toothed tiger, which is perfect and less than hill the hill changes, right? Because now you've lost that thing down here, which is the editing function, which changes this thing up here. You've actually given it up in exchange for local subjective uh, advantage. So what ends up happening, of course, is you've now become brittle. And if you, if you have any minor change in the hill, then your adaptive capacity begins to go down, but you no longer can respond to it. Your, your generator function has been given up, and this is a trade-off, right? You have these trades between them. If you're all generator function and no um, adaptive strategy, then you, know, you suck. You can't do anything in the world. You're sort of constantly having to process from first principles. If you're all fundamentally responding to well-defined scripts, then you, you've lost generator capacity. If you recall the video on thinking and not thinking, it's the same thing. It's just a, a more fundamental version of that, that notion. Now, the, the other primary strategy uh, that is talked about in evolutionary theory is uh, valley crossing. Right. So this is the capacity to actually go down in local fitness, go across some adaptive valley, which sucks from an evolutionary perspective for some who knows how long. Right? It may actually be just wandering in the desert, but under the expectation of at some point finding another hill over here, which is in fact higher, or at least one which you can climb to a higher point on. And you can think about that as the ability to integrate time, to take a future potential large payout, 
take some discount rate of the possibility of actually discovering and finding it, comparing it to your instantaneous value of where you are now, and making the choice of undergoing that longer thing. Um, this shows up, by the way, in human beings in, say, for example, the cookie test, uh, which I understand is actually a really, really effective predictor of the degree to which human beings are able to have life success as children. So you take a child, put them in a room, put down a cookie in front of them, ideally a really delicious cookie, and you say, hey, here's the deal. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave this room, and nobody's going to be here. Nobody can see what happens. But if I come back, and there's still a cookie here, you get another cookie. But if you if you eat the cookie while I'm gone, that's the only cookie you get, but you won't be punished. It's okay. It's your choice. Right? And then you leave, and you see what happens. And the point is that if the kid has the capacity to valley cross the arduous five minutes of being a kid in front of a delicious cookie, that means they have a generator function that's able to actually do things like sense future value and make discount rates to make a choice now that doesn't pay off now but pays off bigger in the future. That's a valley crossing fundamental. And of course, anybody who has a valley crossing capacity at, say, the age of five um, may be able to then use that to respond more effectively to the world. So... So now we, you, we find ourselves in this, this is a generalized problematic. This is a generalized situation where you have your localized adaptive capacity, you have your generator function, you have the trade-off between maintaining the resources and attention and capacity of the ability for the generator function to modify, upgrade, and edit the sort of the phenomenal schema and or the effectiveness and efficiency of the phenomenal schema. And this shows up, for example, in the famous S-curves that describe why and how corporations rise and fall. So I'm a, a, an early startup. I'm effectively all adaptive capacity. I'm just a generator function. I'm a bunch of smart people. No quite idea exactly who I am, what I'm doing, how to do it. Um, I'm creatively exploring my environment. This is the bottom of the S-curve. I'm not showing up as winning in any meaningful way. In fact, what I'm actually doing here is I'm valley crossing. But then I find something that works. Now, if it turns out that I found a good hill, let's say I found search or social media, then I begin the process of actually converting a DAP generator function into excellence, into effectiveness, into efficiency, into uh, scripts and schemas that are able to work well, quickly, responsibly, at low cost, with low error. Um, so then I actually enter into the accelerating curve of the S-curve, right? um, and I get to get what shows up as, at a phenomenal level, it shows up as winning. Right, I actually feel like I'm winning. I'm generating a trade-off. I'm converting my generator capacity into what I, my phenomenal signals are telling me is good. Um, and that's actually true. My adaptive capacity is rising up this curve until roughly about the midpoint. At the midpoint, I actually enter into a very interesting switch. And it, you might call this the addictive switch or the delusional switch, which is that I'm actually still getting return. I'm getting saying, for example, as a corporation, my, my profit line is growing. This is actually the point where my profit line is growing at its biggest. I'm, I've now really won market share. and I've gotten really good at it. Nobody can compete. So I'm actually generating really, really outsized returns. It's like the golden age. Uh, but my rate of acceleration is actually beginning to slow down. My velocity might actually be increasing, but my rate of acceleration is slowing down, a second derivative. So what ends up happening is that line is starting to get ready to go here. It may not be here yet, but it's starting to get ready to go here. And this is that, that moment from the movie The Matrix where, Lieutenant, your men are already dead. You don't know it. Right? You've got a whole bunch of well-trained, well-armed cops getting ready to go in and fight with one little girl. What you don't know is you're a saber-toothed tiger in a niche that's about to go away. You don't know that you've externalized your fundamental generator function into what is now about to become an obsolete set of uh, schema. Um, you just don't know it because the signaling mechanism, that phenomenal numinal gap, has separated out. And you, you remember that loop that we had in the phenomenal numinal conversation, that the, the signaling mechanisms that actually are able to come all the way back and make it conscious that there's something wrong are dwarfed by the signaling mechanisms happening at the surface. I'm drinking my Coke. I'm getting what it is that I need. Nope, I'm getting what I want. So now I'm addicted to my wants. I'm blind to my my underlying needs. I'm even more blind to the fact that I've begun making choices that take me out of sovereignty, and the top of the curve begins to happen, which means that you are now um, in senescence as an organism, as a corporation, uh, and you're fragile, meaning that if at any meaningful point the adaptive landscape changes, you're not going to be able to respond, and you will die.